Hey guys, it's May May and check this out. I have seen paper purses everywhere lately and I thought, why have I not tried my hand at this? Cause I love purses in real life and I love the paper purse idea because what a cute way to give a gift. Well, then I got to thinking, how can I make this simple? No punch boards, no fancy materials, just paper. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a 12 by 12 piece of paper and some trim pieces and make a bag. So let's get started. So now we can score our 12 by 12 inch piece of paper. What I need to caution you about is you need to pay attention to how you want your paper to lay when the bag is finished. So I wanted this stripe to go up and down on the front of the bag. It goes sideways here and it's still one piece of paper, but this piece is important. So I'm going to imagine that the front of my bag is right here. I want these stripes to go in that same direction. So front of the bag, back of the bag, sides, all right? So because that's the case, you're gonna score like this. You're gonna score half an inch, four and a half, seven and a half, and 11 and a half. This will make more sense as we get going, but this is the front of your bag and this half inch needs to be at the top of the bag, okay? Very good, now let's turn the page. Now here, you're gonna score at three and three quarters, and then eight and one quarter. So your top of your bag is now running here because we have that half inch already done. And then this is the front, these are the sides. Okay, it'll make sense as we get going. Now go ahead and fold down all of these side pieces. Don't worry about those half inch flaps. Let those ride for a little while. We're only gonna do the four major folds to start, and that is these guys, okay? Like I said, leave those half inches alone. You'll be glad you did. Now then, take some scissors. I'm gonna use my long Tim Holtz scissors because it's a pretty long cut. Another very important thing, okay? Where those half inch folds are, that tells you that's the front of the bag, you're gonna cut four very specific slices, okay? You wanna cut these two slices to that score line, and these two pieces to that score line. The reason is we're gonna bring the sides in. So we want the front pieces to be separated from the sides, all right? It's important that you do it this way. So I'm gonna slice this one here. All the way down, this paper is so beautiful, it is so thick. And slice it here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you why that's important. These two flaps have to go in Okay, because this is the side of our bag. So that's why it's important that you leave the front of your bag a loose flap. All right, so let's turn it around. Slice in. And then slice in. All right, so our sides are free from our fronts. Okay, these are our fronts. How do we know they're our fronts? Because they have this half inch piece that goes over the side, remember? These are our half inch flaps. Okay, now this is super simple. Ready for this? We're gonna glue these side pieces. There are half inch score marks on your side pieces, but it's not gonna matter. We don't need them there. We need them at the top, but to make it easier, we scored the whole piece. So when you bring this over, don't worry about that score mark that's on the side flap. Only the one on the top is the one we're gonna use. All right, so we'll get that glued down into place. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down this one as well. I promise if you watch this video from start to finish, my instructions will make sense. It's very hard when you just kinda of try to do it with me. You need to see all of the tips and tricks all the way throughout. All right, now we can glue these two sides in. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on both of these flaps. It makes this so much easier. So glue like that. You can certainly use a dry adhesive here too if you'd rather, no big deal. Glue like that. I'm gonna take these two guys together. Okay, push these guys in like this and then just seal them into place. You're kind of making a box to be honest and I'll tell you how this came about. I was watching a lot of people make these paper bags and everybody has a great technique, but I thought, could we do this with just a scoreboard and a ruler and you know, easy work? and basically we're making a box, so yes, we can. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna deal with these top flaps. These get folded under. So I'm gonna run a little glue along that flap, like so, and I'm gonna fold these down. What these are gonna do for you is clean up that top edge of the box. See how that looks like a stitched seam or something in there, like a piece of trim? That's what we wanted to do. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this other one down. 
So we end up with the front of our bag like this, okay? I wanted those stripes in that direction going up and down. And then when we get ready, we just kind of work this around like so and we don't fold it necessarily but that's what's going to give us the look of our bag before we do that though i want to put some trim around the bottom i know it looks like just a square now but that's where our other bag started too so let's do a little trim here i'm actually going to go ahead at this point and cut my trim pieces and my handle pieces all at the same time for my trim piece i'm cutting a one inch strip that is 11 inches long i'm going to cut two of those and for my handle piece, I'm gonna cut a one inch strip that is half an inch long. Did you see me switch my paper? I did that on purpose. It's easier for me to cut a half an inch measuring over here because it gives me all this room to hold on to. So I'm gonna cut a half inch strip here and another half inch strip. So our one inch pieces are for our trim around the bottom and I want to do a little border punching to those. This is a scalloped scallop punch. I think it is super cute for this kind of thing. And I'm just gonna start on one end of the paper. Notice how I put it into the punch. You can see it sliding there. I just slide it to the very edge where that punch starts and punch. And this helps you line them up in, as we start to tr put the trim on the bag. Believe it or not, when you start them both at the same spot in your punch, it really does help. Now with my trim, I'm going to take the two pieces. I'm gonna put a little glue on one scallop part of the trim, and I'm gonna add another piece by overlapping and matching up that scallop. Just like that. You're not looking for perfection, but as close as you can get it to exact is good because it'll lay around the purse better. I even put it on my work surface and make sure it's lined up nice and even. And then we can take it to the purse. Now for putting this on the purse, I like to use a dry adhesive. So I take some sticky tape and I run it down the bottom here all the way down. I just found that this is much faster and much easier than trying to wait on wet glue to dry. Even if you are using art glitter glue, which dries super fast, this still works better to me. So we have our long, long strip. I'm gonna peel away one edge, and I'm only gonna work with about three or four inches to start. So I'm just gonna do it like this, and just kinda of treat it like, I don't know, like it was glue, but it's not. Now I'm gonna start in the back of the bag. I want that to be the front, so I'm gonna start back here, and kind of in the center, and you can even run this all the way to a seam. Watch this if you wanna do this, because you got plenty. I made sure I had plenty of um, trim. So I'm gonna stick that one down like that. Then, at the fold, I'm going to fold it. I'm gonna let it crease. It won't matter, because the bottom of your purse is a square anyway. So you can let this part crease, no big deal. Same thing here. Then, I'm gonna peel away a little more. Crease that down, match that up. And I'm gonna fold this over just a little bit, just cause I think it'll look better. And then I'll trim it away. Trim it at that one scallop there and seal it down. And you won't notice it's nice, solid brown. It looks good, okay? So we're good there. Now, if you want to add trim to the top, you can. And I'm actually gonna add it only to the edges. I think this will be cute whenever it curves out. I think it'll be adorable to have this little edge trim. So I'm not gonna waste this that I have left over. I'm gonna put it right to the edge of that paper and stick that down so that when the purse pokes out or curves out on the sides, it'll have a little trim. It'll make it look kind of cute. This is the fun part with these purses. You can do anything you want. You can let your kids design these. How cute would that be if they got into the craft room and played? This would be super fun. And that is just enough trim to do that with. So perfect, okay? So now when we poke this out, see how the sides have a little trim? How cute is that, right? Okay, so now we need to do the closure and handles. For the first bag I made, I did this flap closure. See how I have it in the back here? This is simply a three inch wide by five inch piece of paper that I did corner rounding on and I glue dotted this into place. That's all that strap is, okay? But for this one, I wanna do a little different piece. 
So for this type of closure, you're gonna need a piece that is three by three and a quarter. Trust me, if you're doing the measurements I'm using today, this is the size you need. I've already done the math for you. So then you're gonna take this and lay it on the diagonal in your paper trimmer so that the points of the paper are on the cutting line. So this will be cut diagonal. See how we did that? So we have two diagonal pieces. Now we're gonna use the scoreboard. Taking one piece, putting it into your scoreboard with the flat piece against your scoring guide, you're gonna score the first piece at half an inch. Then you're gonna score it at one and one half. So the score mark is half an inch, one and one half, and you're gonna do the same thing on the other one. Half an inch, one and one half. All right, now we're gonna do a little work on these guys. On these guys, we're gonna do some folding. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna fold that top flap back and crease it. Then you're gonna fold this bottom flap and crease it. I'm gonna actually crease it with my bone folder and get it nice and crisp. Okay, now I'm gonna put a magnet in these. So I have two strong magnets and I have my little pieces and I'm gonna put these magnets under this little pointy piece. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put down a little sticky because you remember that's how I put magnets in. A little sticky on one side, lift this up, sit my magnet in just like that then put sticky on top of it, and I'm gonna seal that piece down on it. Now, I'm gonna come back and put some trim on top to make that prettier, but that will get my magnet started. So the same thing again, sticky, put my other magnet down. You know what, you better test these because they are um, left and right, so that's good. So I know that's where I want that one. So let's put that one just like that. Put a little sticky on top. And then peel off this part. Seal that down. Now I'm just gonna do a test run real quick. One of these will overlap the other and it'll close just like that. So our magnets will close into place. And as you can imagine, we're gonna attach this to the purse. But first, I'm going to cover these with a little more paper. So I'm gonna add some sticky. And don't worry, this will clean it all up. It's gonna look messy until we get it all sealed down and then it's gonna look nice and neat. While I've got my sticky tape out, I'm gonna flip them over and I'm gonna put a little tape on this back section here. Just running down that piece because that's where we're gonna attach it to the bag. Now, because I wanna cheat this, I don't wanna measure, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these pieces away, the backer pieces. I'm gonna take some of that same brown, which you could use a different color if you want to, and I'm just gonna line it up on top of it, clearing that score line. I need that score line to stay cleared. And then I'm gonna trim this out, just using some scissors. Just because I don't wanna measure. But see how clean and neat that looks now? Nice and clean and closed in. Let's do the other one too. So now we just take this to the front of the bag. You wanna peel this backer piece off of your adhesive. And I'm gonna lay the bag down like this, but you're gonna adhere this to where that trim piece is that we added in. So you're just gonna center this up. I'll show you once I get it on there. It's hard to do to get it there in place and show you guys. So basically you'll center it and you'll end up with it looking like that. Okay, so I stuck it down to that piece. Then I'm gonna flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Now, like I said, you can do the flap on the outside, but I wanted to put a little decoration on the front of this purse that I didn't put on the other one. And so I thought I wanna leave the front clear so I can add something to it. And I thought, well, this is a good way to do it. Just add this piece to the inside. Now I bring them together and they magnetize together. Now here's a situation. When I first did this, they did not hold exactly like I wanted them to. They pulled away. What was important is I pressed down on kind of the base of the bag like this to help give it some stability, and now they hold just fine. So there's our magnets in place. I like that. So now I have this front section to add something to. Now let's do straps. Super easy with the straps. I just take those pieces that we cut for the straps, and I just do this kind of 
curling with my bone folder just to give them a good edge. And I'm using a single um, a single piece of cardstock because I think it looks better. I tried doing this folded over and it was just too bulky. It did not work. I also discovered that I like doing this with the sticky tape instead of wet glue because this um, will seal down faster that way. With the wet glue, you kind of have to hold the strap into place for a little bit and I didn't want to do that. So I'm just adding a little bit of the sticky strip or the sticky tape to the bottom. Now I'm gonna put my handles on and I'm gonna kind of use the little brown trim on the sides as my guide for how far to put those down and just stick those into place like that. That's cute. Flip it over, we'll do the front one. Now, so there we go, got our handles into place. Now for something pretty on the front and to hang off of these and all kinds of embellishments. So I have a new stamp set and when I created this stamp set, this was one of the inspirations one of the ladies from my church um, used to have a Bible cover that had a zebra print cross on it, and I loved that zebra print cross. And I've seen purses that have these on them as well, and I thought, I really want to do this. So I'm gonna stamp this zebra print cross, which is actually from, let me show you the stamp set. It's from this set, and it's available in the store now. You can get that, the link is below. So I think this will be so cute on the front of this purse, so I'm just gonna stamp that there. Let that dry for just a second, and while I'm here on this same paper, I'm also gonna stamp a little stitched tag that comes from my Santa's key set right here. And using that same stamp set I just showed you earlier, the one with the cross on it, I'm gonna use this little heart and the word hugs inside of this little tag. I think that'll be cute if I'm giving this as a gift and I'm gonna cut these guys out. I'm not gonna use my brother's scan and cut, I'm actually gonna fussy cut them, but you could use your scan and cut to do this. So I got these guys fussy cut out and from my friend Gareth's store, I have these little embellishments. I have this little um, plastic heart that has some little flowers on it. I'm gonna put that right into the middle of the cross. I think that'll be cute there to look kind of like jewelry. This one I'm gonna put a little hole in with the crocodile and we're gonna string a couple things together. This is a little heart from my friend Gary Store that says made with love. I think that's adorable. I'm gonna run it through with this on some twine. So I got these guys all strung together. Look how cute that is. They're on the top, isn't that precious? I love it. Now I'm gonna take this little um, tag and I'm gonna hang it from here when we're done. But first I wanna put the cross on the front of the bag. Look how cute that is, isn't that precious? And I'm gonna glue it straight down. You could pop it up with dimension, but I think for this kind of application that we're doing, I think putting it down flat is the way to go. So cute. Now I'm gonna tie this little tag on. You could put to and from on the back of this little tag, so for the gift portion, it would be so cute to have that on there. And imagine all the cute little things you could put inside this bag to give to somebody. Now there's a couple more things I wanna add. I wanna add a couple of little pearls there. I have these stick-on pearls that I think will be perfect. I did this on the other bag too. I thought they were really cute right here as if they were holding that strap on. You could put brads through there if you, gosh, you could just do anything. You could make these purses look like that $500 purse you actually wanna own but can't afford like me. <laughs> so you could even do that. So there's our purses with two different closures. I think they're adorable. I think this would be perfect gifts for anybody. Easy to make, one sheet of paper, a little bit of trim, and they turn out to be, let me tell you how big they are, because I bet you're wondering, let's see. They end up being four inches tall, um, and when you hold it, when you do the, all the way from the bottom to the straps, they're about eight inches high with the straps on. And again, they are three inches wide. So I hope those um, come in handy for you guys in your gift giving, or imagine you could put greeting cards, you could put note cards, you could put candy, anything you want. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.